Hey Stampers, welcome to Brandy's Cards. So today we've got a really fun card for you guys. It's, uh, it was made with the Best of Butterflies um, stamp set. Love this butterfly. It is one of my favorites and it flutters, it's real pretty. Do you guys see the window effect in here? It's um, it really, really cool. But then when you open it up, check that out. That is so awesome. And so I'm not real sure exactly what that is called, but we're just gonna kinda call it a window type card. Um, so that's what we're going to make today. We're going to use uh, Daffodil Delight and Whisper White cardstock. And all of the dimensions and sizes and things will be on brandyscards.com. So don't worry about finding them right here. There will be a link in this video where you can see all of the sizes and dimensions. Of course, all the products that I use too. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to fold a, a piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock in half. And now what I'm going to do is I have already pre-cut my white cardstock, my Whisper White cardstock. And, you know, the best thing to do is to go ahead and uh, run it through the Big Shot in your embossing folder first. So I've already pre-done that and I use the Modern Mosaic embossing folder. It is so pretty and it's from, the, um, it's from our new catalog, so it, it's awesome. Love that embossing folder. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it right on top as if I were gluing it down. But I'm not actually gonna glue it down yet. But I'm gonna go ahead and set it right on top as though I am. And then, um, well I've got the magnetic platform here. And well I thought that I would do another card using the magnetic platform so that I could show you guys the proper technique on how to use it, okay? So from what I read or from what I heard, um, I need to put the magnetic platform down and then one of my plastic plates got my cardstock, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my circle framelits. If you guys haven't seen the circle framelits yet, they are just fantastic. I mean, to think that we can get, you know, circles that big and that they layer and frame each other, it's rock solid. Pretty awesome. So really excited about those. And I know you guys are wondering, let's see, I've got the one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the sixth circle starting from the inside working out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this circle where I want my window to be. And yes, I am cutting through two layers of cardstock, both the Whisper White embossed mosaic, modern mosaic piece, along with the Daffodil Delight. Okay, so I'm going to add the other plate on there as the instructions uh, show. I'm going to run that through my Big Shot. That's perfect. So once I take that out, by doing those pieces together, check this out. By doing these two pieces together, now you have that perfect hole there. Um, and so it, it fits, it layers perfectly. So it's really easy to do, it's not, not, too, not too difficult. Now the circle underneath that one would be the circle, the fifth circle, starting from the inside moving out. And I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna make a couple circles to, that, a couple circles that'll fit here in the center. All right, so this is like a size smaller. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just take two pieces of Whisper White cardstock. I'm gonna sandwich them together, just put them together. And then I'm gonna put them on my magnetic platform. And I'm gonna run that through my Big Shot real quick here. And then once I do, I am ready to show you guys how I assembled this fun card. So check this out. So these just like pop right out, super cool. Um, you know, I've tried three um, I've tried three layers. I don't really recommend it. Two layers seems to work perfect. Um, so you can get away with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and I've got my butterfly. So I've got stays on ink and I'm going to go ahead and stamp my butterfly on the little circle that I just punched out. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want his little wispies. I want his antennas. That's exactly why I'm doing that, because when I cut him out, after I watercolor him, yes, we're gonna watercolor him with the aqua painter, then I have his wispies already there. Um, so I don't have to like cut it, cut them out, which is kind of a pain in the neck. So I didn't really like how I stamped that one. So I'm just gonna flip it over and stamp it again. Perfect. Now you can see here I've got my two circles with my butterfly stamped. Now I've got some Stampin' Up! watercolor paper. Stuff is wonderful. Yes, you can watercolor on regular Whisper White cardstock, but the watercolor paper blends beautifully and I highly recommend it. So you want to use your stays on ink so that you've got, um, so that it absorbs and it's a permanent ink. It doesn't bleed when you go to watercolor it. So you're going to push it straight down, straight up onto your watercolor paper. And we actually need two of those. So let's do another one. And I actually have a third one on here just in case 
uh, we need to, um, just in case, we need to color it. Now, what I'm going to use to color is the aqua painter. If you have a blender pender, blender pender, <laughs> you have a blender pen, <laughs> go ahead and use that because uh, that works too. But I really like the aqua painter, so <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, so what we're going to do is, um, since my watercolor crayons are put away right now, I have got my stamp pads, Daffodil Delight, Tangerine Tango. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and squeeze your stamp pad, and when you do that, and you pop it open, you'll see that the ink here is on the top of the lid. So we can pick up that ink just like we could take it from a watercolor crayon. So I'm going to start with my yellow. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to start here on the inside of my butterfly and kind of work my way out. And by doing that, you really get, um, you know, it kind of allows you to blend better. You start out with that lighter color, you work outward, and then we'll go ahead and add that darker color in there. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of coloring outward, um, you know, just not, not, not worrying too much about it really. You know, it's not, uh, not too big of a deal. So we're going to keep going. I'm on the other side now. And you may, um, you know, and if you're not picking up enough color, you might actually need to just close your stamp pad and give another couple good squeezes, pick up a little bit more ink, and then start in with your orange, your Tangerine Tango. So we're going to go ahead while we have this open and let's just do both, um, both of our butterflies. Now the really cool thing is, is once we get our orange on there, you can totally go back in and add more, um, and you can add more yellow to it. You can make it more vibrant. Um, so don't worry about it the first time that you color it because you can definitely make it um, brighter as you go. So now I'm going to go ahead and squeeze Tangerine Tango. Give it a good couple squeezes. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So there's my lid. And now I've got some orange that I can pick up. And I kind of want my Tangerine Tango to be kind of on the edge of his wings. But of course, you know, this can be any kind of butterfly that you want. Um, you certainly do not have to color it as I've colored it. You can switch it up, do something a little different. Some of the ladies at my card class, they used purples and blues, and it was so pretty. Um, so, you know, don't feel like you have, to, you have to go with exactly how it is here. This is just the starting place. So, now what I'm going to do is, you see I've put some orange down here, some Tangerine Tango. And, you know, the Aqua Painter has water in it. You've actually filled it full of water. So, if you squeeze it, it's going to saturate your color. Not saturate your color. It's going to saturate your paper and dilute the color a little bit. So, you just got to be careful that you don't, um, you don't get too much water on there. You don't want to dig a hole either in your, car, in your uh, watercolor cardstock. So just have an extra sheet of paper or paper towel off to the side that you can use to uh, blend your, um, to wipe your aqua painter or to blend your color off a little bit, um, to wipe it off. All right, so I'm just about done with this, this butterfly. And honestly, this is what takes the longest on this card. Um, it takes the most time, but quite honestly, it's the most fun as well. Um, so, you know, it just kind of depends on if, if you like to kind of feel like an artist and you like to color, um, then you will absolutely love the blender pen and you will love doing this. Okay, so check that out. That's one. That's one that is done. So, yes, I've got one more to go, but I promise you we'll try to do it fairly quickly. Um, so again, you know, you just kind of want to keep on coloring and, you know, don't, don't get too, too crazy or picky about it. I mean, again, when you, add, you can go back and you can make it more vibrant and you can make it darker. Um, one thing I find is that ladies will say, oh my gosh, I've got this big dab of water on there and it looks so bad. What do I do? Well, just have a paper towel close by. And if you dab straight down and straight up, well, you can get that cleaned up pretty quickly without ruining your image. But... Um, so you just got to be careful. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this again. I'm going to give it a good couple squeezes because we need some more ink. I've run out. And um, we're going to flip that up. And now let's go ahead and put a little bit more yellow in here and we're going to keep blending. I might actually even squeeze my pen and just get some, more, um, get some more water coming through here. So maybe we can push some of this color around a little bit more. There you go. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but you can actually take your stamp and write markers and apply color that way as well. Pretty cool, right? Or if you have any of our Water Wonder crayons, those are wonderful as well. Um, so those work just as beautifully. 
Um, but again, you know, sometimes you don't need all of those things. If you have stamp pads and you have an aqua painter or a blender pen, you're good to go. All right, so there we go, perfect. I think I've got my butterflies just how I'd like them. And now the other thing is, is um, you're gonna probably want a black marker or maybe even a, um, if you have any of the neutrals, um, blender, uh, neutrals, watercolor crayons and things like that or a stamp pad and you can add a little color to the middle of the butterfly but because I don't have one right here right this minute I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how I just cut out my butterfly and you know one thing when you're cutting stuff out you don't necessarily have to cut perfectly on the butterfly or on the image um, but you know you can cut as close as you can do the best you can and then I am gonna cut his antennas right off because remember, when I layer him on top of the circle where I've already stamped him, it'll appear as though he has got his antennas. So it's pretty cool. Really, really cool stuff. It's an illusion. All right, so here we go. This is almost done. I've got my first butterfly cut out. So while I'm cutting the one more butterfly out, I want to let you know that what I use to hold my butterfly in the center of my window card is fishing line. That's right. It's kind of funny, I had all the gals over the other day and we were in stamp camp and I ran out of fishing line. So I had to like run out and ask my husband to, um, to uh, disassemble one of his fishing rods downstairs. And he's like, what do you need fishing line for? I'm crafting, you know, everything works. So anyway, hopefully it wasn't too fishy, but, uh, but it was really a lot of fun. The girls got a kick out of it, really. So here we go. I'm just about done. I got a couple more little turns here. There we go. Finished. Super. All right, now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, take a mini. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's go ahead and assemble our card because I think it'll be better to put our butterflies at the end. So I have a piece of fishing line, just a long piece of fishing line. I wouldn't really worry about measuring it at this point. You can measure it and cut it, you know, cut it work so how it works for you after we're done here. Um, so I'm going to take a Stampin' Dimensional and I'm going to put this, the fishing wire here at the top of my circle. I'm going to push it at the top of the circle and I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensional to hold it down. I'm going to bring my fishing line straight down to the bottom of the circle and I'm going to put another Stampin' Dimensional um, at the bottom to hold that fishing, wire, uh, fishing line down. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to just add another Stampin' Dimensional here on the bottom just for good measure and I'm going to snip it off. So I do have a little bit extra. Now I've got my Modern Mosaic um, Whisper White piece. So I'm going to put a Stampin' Dimensional on each corner of the, um, of the embossed Whisper White piece. And then I'm going to come back and check this out. All I'm going to do is just center it on my circle and uh, it's perfect. There you go. Check that out. You see that? So it's perfect and there's just a fishing line in the middle. Now you've got these two white pieces that you cut and you're going to sandwich them um, in between. So what I would do is it doesn't look like I have my glue out here right this second. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use my, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and use, oh you got some, yes that'd be great. Oh look at that. Ooh. I wonder, <laughs> round two, no wonder why I didn't play softball. <laughs> I can't catch balls, <laughs> or flying glue for that matter. Okay, so here we go. So uh, I'm going to use some um, Tombow glue, and I'm just going to cover the back of um, the back of one of my circles. And then, you, basically what you're gonna do is, this is the important part, is um, check this out ladies. So here, your butterfly is fluttering the correct way, but when you open it up, he's upside down. Well, it, it's upside down if you look at the front compared, you know, when you open it up. So just make sure that you're gluing your circles the right way. Um, so every single time that I've done it, I've honestly had to like restamp a butterfly and glue it on top because I've opened it and been like, oh, he's flying upside down. So trust me, it'll probably happen, but don't freak out about it. Just stamp another circle and glue it the right way, okay? So let's see here. So if I want him to fly that direction, and this one's going to be this direction, so that's what we got to do. So we're going to set this down here in the center, 
and I'm just going to kind of go ahead and I can see sort of how I want him to flutter. Just sort of set it down. You know, and quite honestly, you can have him twisted a little bit. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it's kind of, it's really sort of pretty just to kind of have him sort of fluttering off to the side. And then I'm going to set my other circle right on top. And what I've done now is I have sandwiched my, um, I have sandwiched my uh, fishing line in between. See that? And you open it and he's the right way. So we're well on our way. One of the neat things here is we've already colored our butterflies and they're real pretty. So we'll just take a um, one mini glue dot, maybe two for good measure. And I'm just gonna stick it right here. And did you guys see that? When I set that butterfly down, his little antennas popped out of there beautifully. And you know, I didn't have to cut them out. So I love that. So here's another one. We'll go ahead and put a couple mini glue dots on the back. And I'm going to stick it right there. Now remember, to take this card a step further, I would absolutely use a black stamp and write marker or a black stamp pad, and I'd color the middle of his body. Um, but because I forgot to bring that over here before I started, um, he's still just as pretty, quite honestly, without it. So let's keep moving. I've got a whisper white piece here for the center and the inside of my card. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this here on the inside. There you have it. Perfect. And now let's stamp a greeting. You know, I think that you could choose any greeting that you would like. Um, I think this one here says, what's this one say? This one says, thank you for caring. It's out of the new thank you stamp set. Um, I think I picked up a happy birthday. This is the um, happy birthday wishes. It's real pretty. I'm going to use um, stays on. And I just grabbed some scraps, quite honestly. You, you know, you don't, you don't really need to recut these little pieces of paper all the time. If you just go ahead and save your scraps, you'll find that when you need that size, you'll have it. All right, there you go. Pretty easy, just, just went ahead and cut that. And you know, I just want to give it a little bit of a, I don't know, I just kind of like to cut in on it a little bit, make it look a little bit like a banner. It just kind of adds a little something more. Put a couple Stampin' Dimensionals here on the back. We're just about done. Um, you know what else would be really cool is if you had a stamp that's a stamp set that said, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry that I've been late or something like that here on the front, and then somebody opens it up and it says Happy Birthday on the inside, Happy Belated Birthday. So there's so many fun things I think that you can do with this card. Um, final, the final touch, you know, sometimes it's just that little extra touch that makes the card perfect. So I have got some um, jewel rhinestones here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it here in the center um, on my butterfly. Because I just think it, it really just sort of adds a little bit of a dazzle, a little bit of a sparkle to him. And don't forget, if you want your butterfly to be a little more vibrant, a little bit darker, you can always go back in and add a little, you know, add a little bit more color to him. So um, you can absolutely do that. So check that out. There you have it. Happy birthday wishes with that little fluttering butterfly you open up on the inside. And there's yet another surprise for, your, for uh, the recipient. Now check this out. This is also a, um, this is the first one I did on white. Really liked that one too. And on this one, I took my black stamp and write marker and I actually outlined the butterfly. So you can do that. You can outline the butterfly, which will make the color pop even more. And another reason why I layered it on the yellow is because I thought it really brought the yellow and the butterfly's wings um, out a little bit more. So that was my thinking when I made this card. I hope that you enjoy it. Um, you know, one of my future videos is going to be a really fun punch art flamingo using the Coastal Cabana um, cardstock. Love that color. And um, so you guys ready for a sneak peek? Okay, here you go. So this is going to be a fun flamingo that we're going to do. He is precious. The gals just did him at stamp camp. They were real excited. And uh, so he is yet to come. So I hope that you stay tuned. If you'd like to know when I post a video, please, um, please subscribe to Brandy's Cards here uh, on YouTube, or you can subscribe on my website, brandyscards.com. So thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope that you have a great day.